Okay, guys, what we're looking at today is a video based around risk cock and why I firmly believe you shouldn't be focusing on risk, uh, risk cock or cocking your wrists because it's a bit of a natural reaction that's going to happen if you let it happen. Uh, if you're trying to focus on cocking your wrist, you're just adding to the complexity of the golf swing. It's a lot easier than you think it is. So we've got a couple of players here, just over on the left, Rory McIlroy. Uh, on the right, we've got an amateur golfer, so I can show you the differences between the two. There's a, there's a pretty big difference. I mean, McIlroy, he gets, you know, over 120 mile an hour club head speed with his driver. Uh, this guy over here, you know, he's, he's barely getting to a, a hundred miles an hour. So we need to have a look at the reasons why. And the great thing about using this 3D system is what I'm about to show you, you, you wouldn't be able to pick it out just looking at a, a picture, a still picture, or just using the old way of videoing a swing with a video camera or a, an iPhone. You can't pick it out because the, you know, the phones just don't have the technology to to get these numbers here, you know, the sensors placed on the wrist, the sensors placed on the arms, the body, all over. So you, you're getting really accurate information, accurate numbers from, from this gear system. So it was really interesting when I was looking uh, through it last week, you know, when I was sort of, you know, looking at what I was going to sort of talk about in this video, but the, the, the wrist cock, um, when you set up or when you start, Let's just show you from a different angle. You get an angle formed between your left arm and the, the club shaft there. Okay, so you can see both players, you know, pretty similar to start with. Basically, if the left arm and the club shaft formed a straight line, that would be 180 degrees. So that they're around about 135, 139. And the top of your swing that would reduce that goes down to 90 degrees so when we look at these numbers right here now we can see or probably the easiest way to explain it is the higher the number the straighter the angle between the, the left forearm left wrist and the club shaft and then the the smaller the number you know when you get to 90 degrees then the more angle created between the left arm and the club shaft so that's the best way to look at it so from what we've been led to believe over the years, we, we sort of imagine that this number here is right from the off would shrink, you know, because there's a lot of talk about setting the wrist and cocking the wrist. So you'd think that number would shrink. So let's have a look at McElroy starting at one, three, five, let's say, and then we're just going to get into his takeaway. So you'd be looking for that number to reduce pretty much, not increase. So one, three, five. And then it's increased, it's one, four, six now. So a big difference there, about you know, 11, 12 degree difference. So what that means is his arms, uh, or the angle between his left arm and the club shaft has actually straightened out a lot more. You know, and it's gone a lot more closer to 180 degrees, uh, which, is, which is getting everything completely flat. So this, what that's actually doing is creating a, a tremendous amount of width on the backswing and that's one thing that you can see with Rory that's that's what he does so well and one of the reasons why he hits the ball so far because he creates so much width on the backswing and then pulls in nice and tight coming through and then creates a whipping action speeding the club up so you can see that there he hasn't actually cocked his wrist you know he's gone the opposite opposite way um, of cocking your wrist it's, it's uncocked the wrists effectively I've talked in other videos about the getting the feeling of almost dragging the handle back first so the, the club head lags behind the hands and that's that's pretty much what what's going on here and we, we always used to see that in the best players from many many years ago if we take the amateur so we see he starts at 139 we'll just get him into his takeaway position um, see what number is that and it's shrinking so is is at 132 but you can see how narrow this is here you know the arms look much closer to the body the butt end of the club looks closer to the body so he's really taking the club back quite narrow there you know the complete opposite of what rory's doing and then if we just continue to the top with the amateur golfer what i want you to focus on is his chest here because what you're going to see is his chest will 
will stop rotating. Now you can see how his left arm or his arms are sort of lifting up now into the top of the swing because his body stopped rotating. So once your body stops rotating, your arms will take over to try and complete the backswing. So you basically lift your arms above your chest, you will get your elbows separating. You know, when we look at it from a different angle, we're going to see his, his left elbow separate quite a bit from his, his right elbow on the backswing. Um, <clears throat> and also his left wrist, that's actually in a cup position. Cups is when it's like this. So it's in a very weak position. So you can see that there, the angle between the left arm, left forearm and the back of the left hand, really cut position, which will open out his club face there. The other thing that he's done, the other killer move that he's done, talked about this in my last video, is his shoulders have turned very level to the ground. You watch as he's going back, how his shoulders are almost, you know, they're, they're pretty much parallel to the ground, aren't they, when he swings back? And as I talked about in the last video, that's the last thing you want going on. Because if you look at McElroy here, as he goes back there with his shoulders, you'll see they're pointing more down towards the ground as he swings back. And you can see the left wrist is nice and flat there as well. So two completely different positions at the top of the backswing. Rory's chest is facing towards the camera. Um, this amateur here. You know, his chest is sort of pointing out in front of him and then his arms are set up, separated. He's just in a very weak position now to get back to the golf ball. But here's the thing I really wanted to cover. And I've, I've done a video on it before where I talk about don't cock your wrists because, you know, what comes first? Does the wrist cock come first or does your right arm fold come first? And if you look at, you know, some simple analogies, if you're using a hammer, you know, you're going to pick that hammer up, you fold your right arm and the momentum from when you fold the arm and lift the hammer up, the momentum then is cocking your wrist. So your wrist cock comes last, just like the golf swing does. And then you turn, uh, fold your right arm and your wrist cock comes last. The same darts as well, you pick up a dart, okay, you don't cock your wrist and then cock your right arm, you know, it's the right arm and the wrist. So it's, it's getting it done in that order, because I know a lot of you be quite conscious about cocking your wrist, but it's, it's just going to get you in such such a bad position. You know, this, the amateur golfer here, he really cups his wrist on the way back because that's the sort of thing he's probably got going on in his head, he, thinking that he needs to cock his wrist and then he's getting into a, you know, a terrible position at the top. So we've got plenty of width here. The wrists haven't even cocked yet, but what we're going to start to see is that right arm on Rory there as, as he goes back, shoulders keep turning, the right arm starts to fold up and then the wrist cock is really sort of coming later on in the swing okay so as he starts going up now as the right arm folds up we can see that the wrists are actually starting to to hinge more as he goes back until he gets right to the top where he gets to about 95 96 degrees so it happened the, the cocking of the wrist happened much later than than you thought you know, it, it it didn't even happen that halfway back. You know, it went the opposite way. It reduced. It increased the opposite way, and then from that point there, the right arm folded up as he kept turning that left shoulder down to the ground, and he got to the top of his backswing position. The chest is fully turned away from the target. You know, that's a really important thing that you've got to do if you want to keep or prevent your arms from splaying apart. You know, this guy here. We can already see that the right arm is separating quite a bit from the right side there. And then that's that's just going to continue as he goes up because his left chest there, it's still facing towards us to the camera. So then his arms just pick up, uh, the wrists are collapsing as well. So he's in a pretty poor, weak position now. So you can't really do a great deal from that position. You know, we can see Rory's left and right chest clearly there. Um, it's not so clear here. We can see a big separation between the right elbow and the left elbow, whereas here it's much closer together, much tighter. Typically, you're going to see a lot of your tour players and good ball strikers with the elbow 
sort of facing down towards the ground. So this elbow sort of points back down here, whereas, you know, if you, if you stop turning and you separate your elbows, then this, this right elbow tends to point back here behind you somewhere. And you, you can see the shoulders, you know, the shoulders are sort of turning down towards the ground. That's how he's able to get the club up into that nice position there. Whereas this, this guy's, he's turning his shoulders a lot more level to the ground. So his spine angles come up, his head's come up. He stopped turning, his arms are separated. He's, he's in trouble from that position, you know, especially with the, the left wrist really cupped as well, the face wide open. Hasn't really got much chance of getting a, a good contact on the ball there. So a lot of, you know, a lot of good stuff to pick out here. Um, you know, what I like to do is, is show you on here, but I like to explain things in a simple language, you know, and that, that's the most important thing. Golf is not that complicated, but over the years, you know, the language that's out there now and all the technical terms, it's, it just confuses a lot of people, you know, it confuses me and it's annoying when you have to go on Google to find out what, what some words mean, what particular words mean. So the best coaches in the world have the ability to put, you know, get across the most complex ideas in, in the most simplest way, in the most simplest language. And that's, that's what a good golf coach can do. So, you know, it's really important to find somebody like that because the last thing you want to do is go and have lessons and then, you know, not really understand the terminology. Um, you know, great. If you want to learn that terminology, you know, if you, if that's, if that's what you're into, but you know, you'll, you'll notice in the videos that I do, I don't use that sort of terminology. I'm just keeping it simple. And I've got the best system in the world to show you what's going on. You know, you can't be looking at something visually to, to get that light bulb turning on in your head. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, that's what it is. You know, you don't learn from reading a load of books and then going out and and trying to put together all that all that crap you know you learn from looking at good players versus average golfers and you know somebody talking about the differences in a simple easy to understand language so if you want to achieve this sort of width here on the way back uh, like McElroy does you know it's definitely feel like the the handle of the club feel like you move the handle of the club back first that's going to create a lot more width in the backswing uh, don't focus on cocking your wrists you know, go to my video where I talk about don't cock your wrists, focus on folding that right arm up, keep turning that left shoulder down to the ground, fold that right arm up, and then that's going to put you in a nice position at the top of your swing. So it's folding that right arm, getting up into a beautiful position. And get that chest turning as well. Right, if you don't think you can turn, you know, a lot of people always moan and say, oh, I can't turn, I'm too stiff. The best thing to do is just, just stand up, okay, and then look over your right shoulder, look directly behind you, just like that, okay, and you'll, what you'll find by doing that is you'll turn easily, okay, then you just put a little bit of tilt down to the ground if you're hitting a golf ball, there's your shoulder turn, everyone can do it. So if you've got a golf club, you know, pick it up in your hands and, and do a practice swing, make a turn, look over your right shoulder, okay, and then look back down to where the golf ball will be. And that will give you the perfect hip turn, right hip pushing back and towards the target, and also the perfect shoulder turn as well. So that's the best draw for getting the turn. And that's what I'd recommend to this guy here to do the same thing, because you get his chest turning out of the way, that means his arms will stay more connected, uh, like McElroy there at the top there. Um, he'll have less chance of his, his wrist cupping if he can get more width on the backswing, you know, dragging the handle first, getting it out nice and wide. But, you know, get yourself some tools. You know, imagine you're knocking that nail. What's happening first? Is it the wrist cock and then the fold of the arm or is it the fold of the arm and then the wrist cock? Because that's what happens in the golf swing. Okay, you turn, that left shoulder goes down fold that right arm, the weight of the hammer or the weight of the golf club happens last. Okay, not first. Stop cocking your wrists. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you for the next one. I just caught the G-Force train at eight. It's like the orange whip, only well made. You can hit shots with it, watch the ball fly. A hundred bucks said the first 20 go right. It'll train your rhythm, get your game back to where it used to be and maybe where you never knew. Pick, pick, pick it up, give it a rip. You need another toy, not another tip. Uh.